again to another tutorial and I was thinking since all of you are so busy doing your renderings I would come up with a bonus tutorial for you. That tutorial is more about the styling and also introducing a different type of rendering style to you and that's going to be adding outlines to your molecule. That's something that you might know already from other viewer programs like Bimol. So we are going to replicate that style in Blender, but of course we are going to use some other features from Blender that you are not able to use in Bimol, for example. Um, to demonstrate that, I prepared a very simple sample scene. You can use whatever scene that you would like to have, so you can apply all of those things to your scene, of course. The shading and uh, the style in terms of the colors is kept very simple, so I only went for very pastel-like colors. The light source is a very uh, sharp sun with an angle of zero to have a very sharp shadow. Uh, also the materials are very simple materials. I did not go for something glossy at the time because I would like to have a more comic-like look. But of course you can uh, choose whatever settings you would like to have. If you would like to see the settings in detail for that scene, of course, you can download the Blender file and look um, to the settings directly. To achieve that outline look, there is something uh, in Blender that does that automatically for you. So there is a setting that you just need to activate. To do that, you go into the rendered properties go down and then there is a tab which is called freestyle and you just need to tick the tab if you enlarge it there are just a, a tiny amount of settings but there are more settings that you can actually choose and those settings can be found in the viewer layer properties and if you go down again there are three subsections that have to do with the freestyle so there is one called freestyle freestyle line set and freestyle line style and probably the most important one is the freestyle line style where you can change the thickness for example of your outline or the color of the outline and so on and so forth we are also going to quickly talk about um, the freestyle line set but we are going to do that after our first test rendering so even though you activated the freestyle setting, uh, there is nothing changing in your viewport. So it does not show up. But as soon as you do a rendering, you are going to see what the outlines look like. And I'm going to go for a quick test rendering. So I'm going to set down the number of samples to a quite low number and also only render at 50% of the um, uh, resolution. So let's see what that looks like. So it should be finished quite quickly. The first result also looks very um, normal as nothing changed, but after the rendering is done, it is going to be processed again and then the outlines show up. And this is what the outlines look like. So if I zoom in, for example, you see it looks very similar to what you uh, I used to have for, from Bimol, for example. But of course, you keep all the features like the shadow over there. Something we have not talked much about yet is how to handle transparent backgrounds in Blender. There is also a setting that you can activate and that can be found in the rendered properties in the film subsection transparent. And as soon as you tick transparent, everything that is left empty in your scene is also going to be transparent in your final render. So instead of having the grayish tone from your background, you get a checked um, area there. So everything that is checked is going to be empty. Now, it would of course be cool if you could, for example, um, have the shadow showing up but not your plane, so that all the rest of that rendering is transparent as well. And lucky for us, there is a function in Blender on how to do that as well. So let's select our plane. Then we go into the object properties. That's a tab we have not used often yet. And if you scroll down to visibility, there is something which is called shadow catcher. And this is exactly what we would like to have. So we just tick that box and our plane seems to disappear, but the shadow stays. That means if we do the final render now, we get our enzyme with the 
outlines end with the shadow there. But there is one thing that you need to take care of and I'm going to show that to you quickly after I rendered the test scene. Of course, our plane is still there and also has an edge and you see now the, that shows up in the final render as well. There are two ways on how to solve that. So I'm going to close that again. The first thing would be just to enlarge your plane so that it just covers the complete frame. So that would be the quick and dirty way on how to do it, but it's 100% effective. The outcome is going to be the same. The second option would be to go back into the line, the freestyle line set and untick border. So if you deactivate border, and if you do the rendering again, the line does not show up anymore, but the outline on your object is still there. So let's say um, you would like to have a focus on your uh, cofactor and not on the outside of your protein. So that should be very uh, laid back. There would be another option that you can choose. And that is also something quite convenient. So if you select your object again, go into the material properties and there is a shader which is called Holdout. And what that shader actually does is it hides everything where the shader is applied. So you see that also in the shadow that's visible and parts of the cofactor on the inside that the areas that normally cover the cofactor are actually left empty as well. That looks weird at first, but if you render it again in combination with the outline, it actually gives a very nice and artistic image. So now you see what it looks like. The outline is still there, but uh, the filling is left empty and is transparent as well. And of course, the focus is set to the cofactor now. So let's go back and also use a shader again. And now I would like to show you an um, application where the shadow catcher of the plane is actually quite convenient to have. For that, I'm going to deactivate the outline and I'm going to just render that scene as it is now, but with just some better settings. So I'm going to use a higher amount of samples and I'm going to also go to 100% of the resolution. I'm going to give that a quick render and I'm going to come back to you as soon as this is finished. So the rendering is finished now. So I'm going to save it as an image. If you save the image, make sure to save it as a PNG because that's the file type that is able to save transparency as well. Also make sure that the, the color is set to RGBA. The A in that case stands for alpha channels, which is responsible for saving the transparency. If that is not ticked, your background might be black. So check back if this is checked and then it's going to be transparent. So I'm going to save that file. And to give you an idea what you can do with that final images, I just um, created a PowerPoint file where I inserted an image that I got from Pexels again. So that would be like a stock image. And if you just add your transparent image on top of that image, you see that it actually looks like uh, as if it would belong there. So the the shadow that is there uh, integrates your rendering into a, an already existing image. Of course, you need to make sure that the perspective and uh, the alignment fits for both scenes. So it's a good idea to first select an image where you would like your rendering to be integrated in and then adjust your camera settings accordingly. So that would be a great way on how to do some kind of composing. So the shadow catcher is perfect for that because I think the shadow really makes a huge difference when it comes to uh, realism uh, in that case. Good. So I hope that you got some kind of inspiration from that tutorial to either use the outlines or the shadow catchers as an artistic element for your renderings as well. And I'm probably going to see you in the next bonus tutorial. Bye.